Mr. Um, Ulmaluk, can I invite you to join me at the table? Um, a very warm welcome, a very warm welcome to Saif Ulmaluk. You just arrived by airplane, um, you had two hours delay, and we're very, very happy that you're here. Thank you. And, and that you're still willing to, after a long flight, to partake in a conversation on uh, dissent, on celebrating dissent, on women dissent, on, um, on uh, freedom of thought and freedom of speech, on universal rights. Um, we had five hours of conversation. Um, uh, it's wonderful that you are willing to close off the first um, uh, session we have on this celebrating dissent, which kicks off tomorrow. It's, tomorrow is being kicked off by the mayor of Amsterdam. And we have two days of conversations. Um, uh, ahead of us, but we thought it would be a good idea to be among ourselves and have a talk with a few of the guests about the things they do in life. And it's wonderful to hear. Very, very warm welcome. Um, you are a lawyer in Pakistan, and you um, uh, um, you took on the case of the Christian woman Asia Bibi. We will talk about your life, I will ask you uh, certain questions about um, the difficulties you encounter with that case. Um, you're now a stranger to the Netherlands because you came here in 2018, last year, because you were um, obliged to, f to, to flee your country um, and to take um, refuge or at least to lay low a little bit in our country. Um, how is it to be back? Is this the first time you're back after your, um, yeah. after your, your time here? Yeah. The first time here. Yeah. And how, how long did you stay here in Holland? Or? Uh, it was uh, about three months, but uh, about uh, one and a half months I was away to USA, Germany, mm -hmm. Finland, France. But I stayed here for about six weeks, I suppose. And you, you thought it wise to, um, to leave your country for a moment? Actually, I didn't want to leave my country even at that very moment. No. There was my friends, uh, the UN people, some uh, the French, some other diplomats in Islamabad. And when the judgment was announced, the whole country was blocked by those mullahs. And they thought I'm um, in great danger. They pushed me now. They pushed me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I was not happy coming. Yeah. It was not a happy coming. No, yeah. no, no, no. I understand. You were. You, it, it, uh, on the contrary. You know, the uh, Netherlands offered me a permanent residence from my whole family in one week, and they said, "In the history, it has uh, never happened like this." They offered you the permanent residence. Permanent residence with your your entire family. Yeah. Yeah. They showed me the permanent residence card and everything. Yeah. And I said, but I'll continue my work because Asia's review was still pending. Mm -hmm. They said, my friends in parliament here, in Dutch parliament, they said, mm -hmm. don't worry. When the time comes, we'll give you special permission. We are the parliament. We can change the laws. So when the case was fixed, 29th of January, 2019. So yes, my friend. 29 so, of this year. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, January. Said I have to go to tender a case before the Supreme Court. They put up my case before the foreign ministers. He put it before the prime minister, who refused. He said, "No, we can't be a party to his killing because he's in danger there, and if he goes and he's killed, so now he's our permanent resident. We can't be party to." So then I said, I have to go. The Prime Minister here said no? I, as I've told, it was decided at the highest level that they don't give me permission. Because according to the law, for five years you can't go to the country where you're in danger. This is the law. So they said, we'll give you an exception, which they didn't give me. Which they didn't give you in no. the end? Yeah. So then I said, for me, permanent residence or nationality is not my issue because my issue is to work. So I've as a lawyer, no. not as a lawyer, working uh, for the human rights case, okay. particularly the blasphemy of the Christian case. 
Yeah. Now I've taken a second woman, Christian woman's case, who's also sentenced to death for blasphemy in Pakistan. A second Along case. with harassment. Shigufta is her name. Yeah. No, I'm doing that case. And I'm doing a couple of other cases of Christians as well. But, but, but um, you defend um, uh, people who are... Um, and actually, Asia Bibi was on death row for eight years. Yeah. Um, can you briefly describe um, 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 why she was sentenced to death? As per the papers, because lawyer knows the allegation from the papers. Yeah. Lawyer is never present where... When it happens. Yeah. No. So he's not a witness. No. So the allegation was that uh, she was working as a field worker Mm -hmm. in a garden for plucking the fruits. The fruits, And yep. there were about 25, 30 Muslim women. And she, this was the only Christian family in that village, whole village. So in the interval, when they were going to have meals, so Asya brought a jug of water for them. And two of them say, we'll not drink from the Christian's hands. So from here, they had a good fight, and they abused each other. And the allegation was that Asya abused not only the woman, but also to the Muslim prophets and blah, blah, blah. So this was the allegation. And that, therefore, you can be sentenced to death? Yeah, according to law, the only sentence is death, no other sentence. Oh, the only sentence? Only sentence. It used to be death or life. But in 1991, a Sharia court of Pakistan, five judges, a case came. They said the odd life imprisonment is against the Quran. So they declared that uh, the odd should be removed from the statute. So it's only that. And then um, uh, you managed very successfully after eight years to get her off death row and get the sentence reversed. Yeah. Um, are you... Uh, Wizard lawyer? Pardon? Are you a wizard lawyer? <laughs> I think uh, this was a case which was my life's case. Mm. Had I lost this case, I might have not been sitting in front of you. Might have not. Because? Uh, if had I lost that case, yeah. I might not have been sitting in this chair. No, so why not? I'm here because I won that case. Yeah. So that was a very, very important case for the whole Christian world, particularly in the Western world. Yeah. So I think I worked very, very hard. Very, very hard. For years? For years. For years, yes. Uh, but you have to live. I mean, how, 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 I don't think it's a very profitable thing to defend somebody who's on death row for blasphemy? Oh, the life is not always for profits. Sometimes it is for something else. Your own satisfactions, saving somebody, is something very special, saving somebody's life. It's very, very special. Even the God says that if you save one innocent, you've done something. Great, great. Because, because you are a religious man? No. Not By really. name, yes. Yes. But I don't follow the religion. And I don't but you're a Muslim by upbringing? I'm Muslim by birth, Muslim by documents. And Belief, yes, but don't practice. No. So, I love drinking whiskey, <laughs> so, which is uh, stopped in Islam. And mm -hmm. in my country, there's three years imprisonment if you're caught drunk, and you can be sentenced for three years to prison. Mm -hmm. If you're caught having a bottle in your possession, three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know whether it's worth spending three years in prison for one glass of whiskey, but whiskey is a very uh, 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 wonderful drink. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Um, 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 I wish I would have known I would have offered you one. Um, 
But maybe we, maybe we can do it yeah, yeah. after that. Yeah. We'll do it. <laughs> um, I understand it's a wonderful feeling to save somebody's life, and you yeah. did. Yeah. You did. You did. And um, because he's living in Canada now, and uh, which is sort of a miracle, um, Asia Bibi. Yeah. The, and it's a famous case, and you um, managed to uh, get her off death row and managed to get her out of the country, and, and you managed to survive yourself, but because the governor of Punjab got killed because of hi him sustaining Asia Bibi. Yeah, he visited Asia in prison. In prison, yeah. Met her, and then he spoke to press outside. Yeah. And he said, these laws are black laws. And the then wrong. he said, yeah. I'm going to give a recommendation to the president of Pakistan. To change the law. To, no, to release us, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So this was the background. The one of the policemen who got himself inducted into the squad of the governor mm -hmm. and with a pre-planned mission to kill him. A pre-planned mission? Yeah. Yeah. Because he was not a permanent, permanent member of that his squad. So one day, one man was missing. So he was sitting around. He said, I married, put my duty there. So he went there, so he killed him. So when governor was killed, that was the time for Pakistan. And that was the first case on religious issues, the murder of Governor Sulman Taseer. The priest for praying his burials were not available in the whole of the country, although they were in government, federal government, provincial government. And then nobody was ready in the whole of the country to prosecute that assassin. There was no prosecutor available to prosecute in him. the whole country. Everybody refused because almost a major portion of the country very educated people, very highly placed people. They were supporting him, that he did a very nice thing. And then it was again Saiful Maluk. It was a very nice thing that he killed the governor. Yeah. It was me who volunteered and who was appointed as a special prosecutor by the president of Pakistan. And I prosecuted him and got him sentenced to death and sent him to God where he wanted to go. So he did him a favor. Go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, if, I mean, other politicians get killed as well. Uh, uh, yeah, there was one Christian minister, Shabazz Bhatti. Yeah. But uh, there's a dispute that he was killed for Russia, or he was killed for something else. I mean, but governor, clearly, because the accused said I killed him, yeah. For this reason. Um, and you are a savvy man and a wise man, and you read the press and you uh, know what's going on in Pakistan, which is difficult to understand. Um, and you know, of course, that it's very dangerous what you do. Very dangerous. Yeah. Why do you do it? You know, people, I always wonder in yeah. my life that why people go to K2. Homalia. I never understand. The 20 goes and 12 comes back. Eight are killed on the way. Yeah, for example. And yeah. No, and they get nothing. As far as my job is concerned, if I got Asia out, yeah. whole the world knows me. Many people take me as their hero. Yeah. They get nothing. And my conscience is satisfied. People are killed in accident, people killed with cholera, people killed by heart attack, you know. People die. People die. Yeah. Everyone had to die. But why not to die in such a fashion that the day I'm killed in Lahore, you are celebrating something here in Amsterdam, she's doing in London, somebody's doing in America. Is that not wonderful? So one of our uh, very, very famous activists from Pakistan, Asma Jangheer. Mm -hmm. I worked with her for 20 years. Big name in the whole country, world. She survived three times 
bullet step from the mullah and from the rightist. But ultimately, one day, morning, she had a breakfast. She was talking to ex-Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. And then Nawaz Sharif gave the phone to someone else to talk, and the phone fell. And she died. So had she died with the bullets of those mullahs, the asma's death could have been entirely different. So I think this is how you can feel strong. If you start worrying, oh, I'll be killed. Then your blood pressure, your everything, you can't survive. When I started that Mumtaz Qadhi's prosecution, I remember. I go anywhere, meet friends, and say, oh, what you have done? You want to commit suicide? You want to kill your kids? Nobody supported me. And people talk half an hour, and my blood pressure will go 160, 120 down, and I'll go to hospital. But then slowly, 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 I make myself understand that one has to die. This is a fact. Prophets went, our fathers went, our forefathers. Nobody can stay here. So prophets, even prophets who, who yeah. talk to God go, yeah, 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 yeah. they die. Yeah. 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 Then why not die in a good fashion and doing something good? So I'm not worried. The answer is. Because worrying is I'm bad for your blood pressure and it's bad for your health. Cases now. There's another woman who is now occupying the same cell where Asya used to live. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing her case. She's also a Christian. She's also sentenced to death for blasphemy. Shafak Emmanuel? Shaf Shafkat is her husband. Shagufta. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Shagufta Kosar. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. she's in the same cell as Asya? Same being? cell where Asya used to be. They have a special cell for women sentenced to death yeah, for there's, blasphemy? Or? There's uh, one woman prison in the whole of the country. Woman prison Multan. Multan is a city's name. So inside, in every prison, there are death cells. But for women, not usually. This is only prison where there are three death cells. So two remains always uh, empty. So, Shagufta was there, but she was not put in that uh, portion of those three cells when she was there. Shagufta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, do you think that you can get her out as well? I'm sure I'll bring her uh, out maybe before the next year, before the next year, no, this year. And I'll come with her to Netherlands. Okay. Living her head. Yeah, that, that go, would be very good. Me idea. going back. Yeah. yeah. You going back again? Yeah. yeah. Because I've, you because you you I want have a lot of work to do in my life. There are many people who need me. You have, yes, you have a lot of work to do. But um, if you go back all the time, you might be killed, and you can't do your work. It doesn't matter. No, I'm planning to train a few other lawyers along with me. I'm talking to a few friends and I'm planning to pay about 10, 15 lawyers who are trained mentally to do all these things. How can you mentally train somebody to be very courageous? Simply, and if, you can, if you can find some good, strong boys, young lawyers, and then you can convince them that doing something for those who are uh, helpless, who can't hire good lawyers, who don't have money, who don't have luck, it is something very, very special. It gives you peace. You make your God happy. You make your conscience happy. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to do uh, this. And you can train younger lawyers? I'm, I'm not planning. to do the same thing. Yeah, for the reason that if I'm not uh, around, 
my life doesn't stay. So there should be some people who are trained and this job continue going on. Because this law would never abolish. That I know. No? The American used to ask me, I went to America three times, the government, the legislator, how can the law can be changed? This is only one way. Tell the chief of army staff of Pakistan to take over the government. And in first order, he should remove these laws. He can only do this. The marshal again. We can't support Marshall. I said, okay, then the last stay out. Then it stays. Like so that. they'll stay as I see. But a part of the success, at least I read, of the fact that you got Asia Bibi out uh, of prison was the fact that um, the European Union uh, threatened to withdraw 35 or 38 billion, billion euros. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so they. They threatened the Pakistani government to no, withdraw the aid? In writing, in writing. But the Pakistani government still, when the case was heard, mm -hmm. the Pakistani government said she should be hanged. What's this with hanging? We talked about this earlier. Is that the, the sentence for blasphemy or what? Yeah, 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 it's for blasphemy. A special cruel sentence for blasphemy? Yeah. And what's this with cruelty? What? I don't know if it's cruelty or not, but they say it is fixed by Allah and fixed by Quran. So, a thing which is fixed by God, if I say it's a cruelty, so then I sign my death warrant. Really? Then I can't survive a single day. Really? No, of course. Then I'm denying the God's commandments, which is given to the Muslim in the holy book. So you can't... I may not practice. But I can say it's a cruelty, but you cannot... You say anything you like. Mm -hmm. no? You're free. Because I have to go back. So you have to exactly know on all those things where the line is, and where the law is, and where the scripture is, and where the Quran says yes, or the law says this. You have to be able to think about every sentence you say. You're right. That's correct. I am survived so far because I come from a family who is strong in the area where I live. Mm -hmm. The lawyers community in Lahore, the, all main leaders and men, big men, they are my followers, they idolize me. So all those who want to kill me, when they see my strength, so it stops them. Otherwise, that just slaps anybody who comes for these cases. But you have to be mentally very, very strong and awake all the time with everything you say. Yeah, you're right. That's correct. Even when I'm roaming around the world, uh -huh. the Western pressmen ask me many questions. So I'm always very careful that it's recorded, it's reported. So I should not give a cause to someone, at least. Working as a lawyer, that is my duty. To provide legal help. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not a witness. I'm not an investigator. I'm not a judge no. to decide right or wrong. No. Lawyer's job is simple. To bring the case of an accused to one of the exception of law to get her out, her or him out. And that's legal, that's moral. But um, um, 
Why does it um, touches on you to defend innocent people? I mean, there are many, many lawyers no. in, in your country. I think this question has been asked many, many years. <clears throat> when I took the case of Mumtaz Kadri as a prosecutor, mm -hmm. then one of my friends was the Chief Justice of the Lahore High Court. So one time, I thought, he's such a close friend, the support me, he's a well done guard. She also fought me. That you need to be admitted to the mental sick hospital. Blah, 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 blah. So, question is, somebody has to do all these things. Somebody. Yeah. And that somebody is incidentally me. I mean, if everybody runs, mm -hmm. then who will protect them? Yeah. Can be very lonely, I think. You know, when wars erupt, mm -hmm. we send our sons to whom we love, to whom we want to marry, to whom we want their grandchildren. We send them to borders. Yeah, to war. And knowing fully well that they'll be killed. No. Don't be sent. We do. Every country does. It. And millions and thousands and they die. So, the simple answer is that someone has to do this thing. And it's a good job. It should be done. I salute you for your courage. Um, um, and coming back to um, the women you defend, um, are you under the impression that it's more women who are prosecuted for blasphemy than men? Uh, no. It's not more women. No. No. These are two Christian women, as I know in Pakistan. And there was one Muslim girl. I also fought her case. Mm -hmm. Now she's on bail, still cases pending. And the other woman, I don't know. Yeah. No. More are men. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And these. Um, because uh, the es the essence of the, I'm sorry, yes, um, the essence of the uh, of the um, of the charges are that you um, that you um, are speaking bad of the Quran or of Allah. That's the the accused. Yeah. Uh, the essence says that they are abusing Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Not the Quran, but the Hadith. No, the Prophet. Unless do you abuse Prophet, you cannot be prosecuted for blasphemy, which is punishable by death. Other is defiling the Quran, holy book of Muslim, turning it, putting it under your shoes, or disgracing it, and that is punishable by life imprisonment. There's no death. And why is it? Um, um, uh, why would, um, if God is almighty, why would it be so terrible if something is said about him which might be less nice or, or what, what would be the, the problem? <clears throat> when I'm talking to my friends, this is my argument. I say, all these men, who, in the name of Islam, in the name of Prophet, in the name of God, are militarizing and saying that we are there to protect the respect of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. I say, this means that if you are not there, there is no respect of Prophet. It is itself cutting the size of the Prophet, to my mind. Yeah. Prophets are men of God, pious men of God. All prophets. Jesus, Moses, Muhammad. And 
even the Muslims book says, the Quran says, you cannot be Muslim unless you believe on Bible, you believe on Torah, you believe on all prophet prior to Muhammad. That's God's command. So then, what is the, where is the dispute? So I say, if prophets need men to defend them, to defend their respect, mm -hmm. this is, in fact, these people are uh, cutting the size of prophet. Uh, yeah. They're, in fact, committing the blasphemy to my mind. Um, prophets, they're pious men of God. God says the prophets can't commit sin. They're not people, they're not ordinary people. No. And I've read Bible, I've read Quran. The God says, whatever a prophet asks you, take it. From whatever the prophet stop, stop it. Say, ask why? Say, why? Because they don't say anything from themselves. They, whatever they say, they say on my command. So I think this is, uh, this started in uh, post-80s, 1980. There was no such uh, offense available in the Pakistan Penal Code. A war started in Afghanistan. The mm -hmm. Americans came to the Pakistan. They saw there are Russians who are non-believers. They don't believe in God. They don't believe yeah. in prophets. We are believing of God, we are believing of prophets, we are brothers. We have to fight with the, these infidels. Take these dollars, take this blah, 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 blah. So they gathered from around the Muslim world volunteers who wanted to fight against the infidels with the American dollars and guns. So that Zawl Haq, who was uh, then ultimately president, president of, of Pakistan. He yeah. had no constituency. People were not with him. The army at the end said, we are not with you. So he wanted to create a constitution, constituency for himself. Constituency, so he yes. chose this mullah. And he brought mullah to the parliament. He appointed them ministers, gave them money, gave them fortunes. And then they said, put this, introduce these laws. And he introduced those laws. Now, all these mullah people, this such a small segment of Pakistani society, such a small segment, but they're so vocal. We, the liberal, we can't come on the road and say, come mullah. I think they should be hardly, hardly in percentage, they should not be 5% of the whole society. But should they not. But they managed to Manage control the whole control country. In the world judicial history, it was ever first when in Asia's uh, case, they came on television, the came in public meeting and they say, if Asya is released, we'll kill these judges of the Supreme Court. Yeah. We'll kill this uh, lawyer who's fighting our case. That's you. No, killing lawyers is still, I say, killing the judges of the Supreme Court. It is on record. And they were saying it and they were saying it. Ultimately, the army came forward. And they thrash this mullah like anything. Now, they're quiet for the time being in Pakistan. They're quiet. All those who were uh, having big mouths and uh, barking with a puck mouth, they're quiet now. 
So a small part of society weaponizing scripture and weaponizing uh, blasphemy laws can clamp down on the whole society and take the whole society hostage. Would you describe them as extreme right ultra-religious sections? I think to call them religious, mm -hmm. this is again uh, uh, something doing injustice with the religion. I mean, these are the people, they don't know the religion. The God in Quran said, if you kill one pers innocent person, that means you have killed the whole humanity on the earth. It's in Quran. And they say, even if Supreme Court has acquitted Asya Bibi, we'll kill her. So they define Quran. They define God. The Prophet Muhammad said, it is much better to release 99 guilty instead of convicting one innocent. So here's a woman, the three senior most judges of the Supreme Court are saying the charge is false. They didn't say the charge is not proved. No, 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 no. It's false. They went, they went too f forward. They said the charge is false. And they changed the criminal law of the Pakistan. They say in future, if a false allegation is leveled, will prosecute those witnesses and they'll be sentenced to the death, same punishment for which they have brought the false allegation. So that is the outcome of Asya Bibi's case. If some benefit is there, this judgment, this is the benefit, then now people must think 10 times. But what is practically happening? You come sometime. I take you to a district court. Yeah. Where the blasphemy accused comes. There are 50, 100 lawyers coming against him. Just for nothing. Policemen who had to investigate that uh, whether the allegation is false or not, he is also frightened from them. And from inside, somewhere, he also wants paradise. Huh? Yeah. Then the judge who is sitting, he is also under such a tremendous pressure of mob, of lawyers, of mullahs, and everybody. He said, if I quit, I said, no, the charge is false. The 500 people will kill him. So in whole of this history since 1985, in district court, which is trial court, where the evidence is recorded, the witnesses deposed before the judge, they cross-examine. It's the only court. The rest of the appellate court, only the record is being seen. Witnesses not come again. So they have acquitted none. Even not a single accuse they have acquitted so far. This is the pressure. So when Asya's appeal was fixed in the Lahore High Court, mm -hmm. it was such an unfortunate that uh, firstly, she never had a good lawyer because no good lawyer indulges in these things. So why we should uh, disturb our lives? And then the judges, the chief justice nominated, to hear her appeal, one of the judge was who was yet to be confirmed. Additional judge, not confirmed, to whom they can say, you go home. And he wrote the judgment, Shabazz Ali Rizvi. Mm -hmm. And the senior judge sitting with him, he was uh, a, such a small man from inside. So, I mean, you lose the case. 
if you get a bad judges. Say, in the present bench, Vinaya Gurdia, CS case in Supreme Court, had Justice Asif Said Khosa, who is the present Chief Justice of Pakistan, not been in the bench, I had no hope. Because he is the man who knows criminal law. Very, very strong man. One of the finest judges born in a thousand years once. So you were lucky that you had a good judge? Yeah. Yeah. So um, would, would, would you say that it proves, that, that the Asia Bibi case proves that Pakistan is still uh, uh, a country which is ruled by law? Yeah, I, I must say at least the Superior Court, the Supreme Court and the High Court. Sometimes. Uh, Unless they are judges who are uh, mentally prejudiced in religious cases, they are. The man they are judges. there. Yeah. They are many judges. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's extremely unlikely that she had been um, released, if I listen to you carefully. Only a few judges would have the courage or the knowledge or the the lack of bias. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Because Asya's, except me, there was none around the world who was expecting that she would be released. None. Because case was such a strong case. There were two eyewitnesses. They say in our present, she abused Prophet Muhammad. She said this, 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 this. But you became more confident now because you say in one year I will be able to, to, um, to accompany um, uh, the next case you are under. You you are doing. I um, think I will her case her is of... not that much tough as it was Asia's case. No. This is a better case. As a lawyer, my opinion is this is a better case. There's a strong points which one can go on strongly urge, and judges has to be with you. But in Asya's case, oh, it was really difficult. But are you um, you're saying if I won't be there, there need to be other lawyers which I'm training now to do the same thing? Are you? I'm planning to train. Are you planning I've to spoken train? to a few friends. One Italian ambassador at Islamabad is a friend of mine. I met him last week. He thinks that, yes, this is a good project. This should be done. And Are you optimistic for Pakistan um, in the next 10 years as a country ruled by law or as a democracy? Uh, I don't know, the Western peoples, they don't understand the third world issues to my mind. The democracy which you have in Netherlands, which is in England, which is in America, it can't be in the, these poor countries like India, like Pakistan, like Bangladesh. They're the People don't have food to eat, people don't have clothes to wear, people don't have medicine to eat. People are living worse life than the animals here. So the anybody is rich using the money, he wants the votes. And what he's thinking, he's thinking that he's purchased something. You know, he feels himself owner. It's not like uh, Netherlands uh, Parliament. Once I went to the Parliament, a friend of mine, Jill Fordwin, was coming from his uh, room, having a tray in his hand. I said, stop, stop here, stop. He didn't understand. He stopped. He said, what happened? I said, stay here. Let me make a photograph. He said, what is in this size of photograph? I said, you don't know. I'll show it to my parliamentarian. 
that there is a member of the parliament who is carrying his tray with his lunch. to drop that. Yeah. Sir, yeah. in Pakistan, a parliamentarian, there is no law for him. He is a small king. So, democracy, democracy, well, it's nothing for the third world. You see democracy in Middle East, this uh, whole Africa, the whole Indian subcontinent. This is democracy, but the Indian democracy, which whole the world was saying, oh, what a democracy. 10 million people in held Kashmir, 10 million, is the fourth week, there's a curfew. Yeah. No medicine, no food, nothing. The girls, one chief minister of uh, Indian state said, her uh, young men like uh, beautiful uh, white Kashmiri women, no, they'll be able to get them. Yeah, them, to marry them. Yeah. No? Yeah. I mean, this is democracy. The Gandhi, who is founder of India, the Nehru, Mahatma his family Gandhi. who ruled India, their grand-grandson, who is now president of the Congress party, he went to Srinagar to show solidarity with the Kashmiris. And he's deported from the airport. Yeah. This is the end. So democracy is, yes, in West for various reasons. The people are educated, the people have food to eat, the people have house to live, people have car to drive, people have bottle to drink, place to dance, girlfriend to enjoy with. They, these are countries only 10% people are enjoying. The 90% are more worse than animals. So, um we shouldn't have too high expectations of democracy in Pakistan and God. the no. And still you're going uh, back. And I say in uh, Muslim beliefs countries, I think they don't fit to the democracy, to my reading of the history and so on. And still you choose to go back and serve say, the rule let, of Let me share, share one thing. Yeah. When I travel right from America, Europe, and I'm enjoying, enjoying, when I land in Istanbul, and I suddenly feel, where have landed? They're not human beings. You ask any official, gate number five, please? I don't know. Ask another official, can you help? So something wrong with Muslims or with blah, 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 blah. no cutsy, no. Blah, blah. But something still, technical wrong. But still, you choose to go back to your country and serve the rule of law, and you see it as your duty, and you see it as a good thing to do um, to uphold the law and then to serve the law and do the right thing, and 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 it's a broken system. So how? Why do you choose to work in a system which you say it will not, in the end, fit the country and the society? No, I didn't say about my courts. That's right. My courts, I always say, particularly the constitutional courts, the Court of Appeal, High Courts, and this the Supreme where you Court, work, yeah? they are worth. I'm practicing for 38 years. Yeah. There, if you have a point, by and large, you get it. Yeah. And what should I do? I should uh, live in Netherlands or England and relax, going to the sea. And this should I? I mean, doing this, 
maybe I'm happy for a few days. I was here for six weeks. I was bored. Whiskey. So much I can't tell you. Yeah. There in the guns and with all those dangers, I'm such a happy man. I'm such an important person. I leave my home, I go to my courts. My high court judges, when I appear in the court, I say, Saf sir, welcome back. We are here to protect you. The inspector general of police. Now, last month, a Supreme Court judge called me in the chamber. He said, how is your security issues going on? I said, I'm going on. He said, if you find any problem, you have to directly phone me. Because my first relative is the inspector general of the province now. I mean, people love me there. Here I'm nobody. <laughs> no, naturally, this is not my country. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, you're an exceptional man that you um, think that it touches on you and that it touches on you to protect people and to do your work under such circumstances. Uh, I don't think many people um, uh, would actually understand no, what No, I know many people who are making forged documents and just to get asylum and coming to some good country. But if you find some time, time visit Lahore, come to my house, stay there. And then you'll understand that why I don't want to live here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this conversation. Um. I was wondering whether there was anybody who would have a comment or a question or a remark. Um, and there are two people I see. There are even three people. Um, I don't know whether we have time for everybody, but... Um, no, I think, we have. I, think I you, have at least a lot of time. Sir, <laughs> uh. Councillor, I'm curious as to what arguments you presented to the court when you were saying if this is uh, from God, this is the uh, sentence is death. What arguments were you able to use to persuade them to... Uh, uh, change the sentence for Asiya Bibi, or what? How how did you present the case? Which particular arguments were persuasive? Actually, I, I will ask three questions, and then then the, otherwise we I will collect them and then. So, um, it, 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 this is the second time I've heard you speak. I was at the conference last year in London, and I didn't know it was possible to be more inspired mm -hmm. by you than I was the last time. <laughs> Um, and, and uh, you know, so my, my parents are from Pakistan. I lived there for only about a year, and uh, and I went back when I was probably about 16. So a lot of what you say resonates with what I saw. Um, but my question, I just wanted to, to to mention how inspired I was by what you were saying. But in addition to that, just piggybacking off her question, I was wondering, was there consistency in the stories from the two different witnesses? Like, did they both say she said the same words, or were you able to unpick that and unravel inconsistency in their testimony? Okay, let's take this one. Actually, <laughs> no, it's almost the same question. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, when we go to the courts, we don't talk religion. Let's make it one thing very, very clear. We don't say what God said. We say, here's the law, here's the provision. It needs this much proof. And the evidence which they brought, here, 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 uh, faults. So it didn't meet the burden of proof. So the first fault was, in criminal law, around the world, the uh, first requirement is that whenever a crime is committed, it must be reported forthwith. Because the philosophy is simple. They say, if you report it with a delay, 
it gives you time to manufacture, to falsely make story. So this was a case in which they say this incident happened on 14th of that particular month. And they reported the case on 19th to the police. And there are judgment of the Supreme Court of Pakistan which says that if a murder case was reported with a delay of two hours only, where the police station was just as a distance of one kilometer or two kilometer, they say, we don't believe the evidence. So this was the one. And then was that uh, there had been the mullah who became the informer to the police. He said, we had been investigating for five days. So nobody is allowed, according to law, to investigate. It is the only police who can investigate. So this was one of our very, very major part. Taslima? So then variations between this witness has not said this, the other has said this. So the combination was the principle for conviction in the criminal law is that the evidence of the prosecution should be beyond the shadow of doubt. Beyond. So if there's a shadow of doubt, he has to go. Can I hold? I will hold the same. Okay. Mm, I, I doubt that if um, Pakistani government you know, the Western countries put so much pressure on Pakistani government to release Asia Bibi. Without that, I don't think that Asia Bibi, it was so, it would, uh, it was so easy to, to make her leave the country or, you know, or you could win, you know, because, you know, it's so dangerous country that the man who killed Salman Tasi was, you know, celebrated by the lawyers. The 7,000 lawyers. So they threw uh, rose petals That's on correct. him. That's it means that actually he got so much support. So it was pressure on the uh, Pakistani government that Pakistani government decided to, you know, release Asia Bibi. Okay, the, it's a very, very strange thing is that in Indian subcontinent, we have the laws against blasphemy. In Pakistan, we have 295A B and B. In and India, C. It, C is only in Pakistan. Yeah. And in India, it is 295A and B. On, in Pakistan, only they have this weird law that death penalty for... Uh, blasphemy and 295A, B, and C were British law, and that was you know to 150 years old law. The maximum Britain, 10 years. Britain doesn't have this law, but still we have this law in the Indian subcontinent. My question is that so many secular people are in Pakistan, so why they don't fight against laws against blasphemy? Because this law is a very bad law and this should be abolished. Does Pakistani people do, do fight against this uh, law for abolition? So first of all, the first portion of your question, it gives an impression to me as it is not the Supreme Court of Pakistan who quitted Asia Bibi. It is the pressure of the Western oh. world that uh, Asia Bibi is acquitted. So this question was asked to me when I was addressing the European Parliament. And one of the members from UK asked me this question. And I was very clear and blunt. I said, no. My Supreme Court is more upright and more strong Supreme Court than the Supreme Court of United States of America. Had there been pressure, 
then the in the judgment the government prosecutor general could have said we don't support it the government prosecutor general it is written in the judgment said that death penalty should be maintained and appeal should be dismissed this is the government's written stance so she was released all on merits and as far as the after release after release what pakistan government would get from asia bb by the way she's a totally uneducated a poor innocent woman a laborer the government would get nothing from that rather government uh, was uh, having to deploy a lot of contingent of police and army and all that that no mullah should come and kill her so and second that uh, why the liberals and the other should not fight for abolishing of the islam so i think uh, the emotions in that part of the world particularly where the people are not educated they don't talk with reason they talk with the emotion say you ask any muslim to do what god says in quran he will not do it you say to muslim that do what muhammad prophet muhammad wants you to do they will not do it they'll be cheating they'll be doing all the worst thing which god and muhammad said don't do it but when it comes somebody says any derogation towards muhammad then they'll come in millions and millions and then the blah blah blah, blah. So, so that is there's no reason is not there i am afraid that no, um, we have to on your back side i know there are several questions around us I, i see a lot of people asking but i'm afraid that we um uh, um uh calling it a night but there's ample time to drink a whiskey and um <laughs> talk about um uh, those cases and this case and your case and your life and your inspiring example um uh so d- please don't go remember your question and i'm sure y- you you we have time to discuss it over a drink um i want to close the first session of our uh, celebrating the sense it's uh, 11 o'clock at night and some people want to go home and come back tomorrow morning uh, because tomorrow morning the mayor of amsterdam van kalsma is opening at 11 o'clock the uh, se- the actually the, the 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 festival this was just the first conversation we want to have and to f- have the fruits of the fact that you are here and um uh, be able to speak and we can air it on the internet and have a, a um a sort of entree to the festival tomorrow um thank you very very much for uh, your time and for the fact that even after a long flight who's been delayed so when you're so sharp you're so inspiring and you're so willing to uh, engage in uh, talk thank you very much thank you very much to provide me and the client to be here <laughs>